The best Sony camera is the Sony A1 and it costs $6,500, that's insane amount of money. And it has also crazy capabilities like the 8K video and 50 megapixel sensor and to be honest, we don't really need that as beginners. My name is Tom Syriax, if you don't know me already, and in today's video, I want to take a look at the best budget options of the Sony cameras and I've divided the video in five categories and we'll start off with the cheapest and more basic cameras and move up to more advanced and more de demanding and also more expensive cameras. And this is rather subjective opinion about the cameras. I'm pretty sure you will have a, a different opinion about which ones should go into each category. So I welcome you to post a comment down below uh, of what would be your top five cameras. So starting with the first one, best beginner's budget camera, I have to give it to the Sony a6000. And this camera has been a lot on my channel. If you've seen, I think I'm squeezing out the maximum of this. It has a 24 megapixel sensor and it is capable camera for, especially for photographers. So if you're a beginner and looking for some budget, uh, option then this is yours you can get uh, used for anywhere from two to three hundred fifty dollars um, it is discontinued but there's a lot of them still available so definitely check it out and if you want to see what this camera can do and haven't seen already check out my videos because i have majority about this uh, beautiful camera and you can see really that it is still capable in 2022 but if you have a little bit more money then I would recommend uh, as the best budget photographer camera, the A6100. It costs a bit more. I think you can find used anywhere from five to $600, but it is the updated version of the Sony A6000. It came out uh, just a few years ago. It also has quite good capabilities uh, regards to video uh, filming. But if you're purely focusing on a photo, that should be a really good starter camera that can last you also uh, many years ahead if you go in a little bit more serious into this hobby. And next up we have the best bang for the buck with a huge potential and here I'm placing the ZV-E10 over the Sony a6400. If I would be making this video a year or two ago I would definitely say that Sony a6400 is the, the camera to go for because it has really good 4K capabilities, the picture profiles and photo capabilities, it has a, a flip up screen and all the good things also it's better sealed but now since the ZV-10 came out it is sort of updated version but it's also a bit cheaper so comparing to the Sony a6400 ZV-E10 is a lot better in a lot of uh, ways. For example, the, the camera is newer, the photo capabilities are the same, the video capabilities are more or less the same as well, but it has things like fully articulating screen. It has the most important thing if you are a video creator, it has the uh, digital stabilization. So you have a gyroscopic data that you can analyze later in the software and then stabilize the footage. Sony a6400 doesn't have neither the OSS nor the digital possibility to stabilize the footage. And if you're a beginner and if you're looking for a camera that would last you a longer time, then I think the ZV-10 is well made because it's, it, it cuts corners in a couple of things. For example, it's not weather sealed, doesn't have a viewfinder, it doesn't have a, a, a pop-up flash and, and all those things, but you don't really need that as a beginner. However, still all the features that the camera has will allow you to use this camera for years to come. So I definitely recommend it. And by the way, I found one that is less than $700 new on BNH Photo. The only uh, way I would recommend the Sony A6400 if you find a used one in a really, really good deal. Other than that, ZV-10 is your best all around camera to go for with a really huge potential best bang for the buck. Number four is the best budget camera for the video. And here I am placing the Sony a6600 just because it has in-body image stabilization. And it also has an aluminum uh, body. It is weather sealed and it is with a larger battery. So for video makers, they will definitely appreciate longer runtime. 
Of course, it has the 4K and it has all the other good things like the picture profiles and so on. The camera also costs quite a lot, 1,400. If you're not filming in so challenging environments and you don't really need that OSS, you can still choose the ZV-10 that I talked just about now. But the A6600 is definitely a gold standard for APS-C when it comes to video makers and a lot of cool things you can do with this camera. So it is a bit expensive, but it is a really, really good camera for video makers. And of course you can still uh, shoot photos with it. There is no difference in that. And last but not least, the best first full frame camera. I can't really say the budget camera because um, it's not really budget, but still, if you are someone who's looking either to upgrade or go into full frame from the very beginning, um, which I don't really recommend because I think you should start with APC. Anyways, if you are going into full frame, then I think the A7C is the camera to go for. It is uh, released not too long ago, two years ago, I believe so. Um, and you have the A7 III as a runner up. The A7 III is a little bit more expensive and it's also a little bit more professional, bigger and heavier. So you have to kind of determine which one you want to go with. I would personally, if I'm not someone uh, who's doing a professional work, I wouldn't care about two SD cards on an A7 III and um, probably wouldn't want to spend an extra cash. Although, as far as I know, the low light performance probably is better on an A7 III. Um, checking out some data, but I haven't tested it side by side. Nevertheless, A7C is smaller, newer. It has articulating screen, which is a really cool thing. Cheaper, lighter, yeah, and it doesn't have two SD cards. So all in all, it is a full frame camera that is in a, on a budget version. A7 II, I wouldn't recommend because I think it's too old and doesn't have a lot of the features that A7 III or A7C has. So those two cameras, A7C and A7 III are very, very similar, uh, but I would recommend A7C if you are just stepping into the full frame world. All right, so that wraps up this video. And these are the five categories from cheapest to more expensive. Let me know what you think about these five categories and what you think about these cameras that I chose in these categories. And if you have any questions, I will of course answer them down below in the comments. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.